Hello, you welcome to one second. Today's topic is Tramorodal Anatomy and Histology. So, before we start in this topic, we try to know what are the blood vessels around the kidney uh, is must. Why? Because uh, this renal vascularization or renal blood veins are arteries to play the important role in the glomerular filtration or uh, the tubular reabsorption. So, uh, before we started this topic, we try to know the renal vascularization. Let's go to the topic. So, uh, introduction. The renal vascularization is a group of uh, blood veins or arteries surrounded by the kidney. Uh, that's why the kidney look like um, uh, reddish brown in color. So, number of veins are around uh, to the nephrons, even pronates, uh, medulla, cartilages, renal capsules. So, number of uh, parts of the kidney entirely surrounded by the, the renal arteries and bloods. So, first we started what are the basic information about the um, renal vascular system? Here, uh, the blood flow uh, was an uh, important phenomena in the kidney because so kidney to only excrete the waste product from the blood. So the kidney blood flow is very important. But also we have a pair of kidneys. So pair of kidneys contains a number of uh, renal blood vessels and capillaries. Okay. Uh, this blood flow, approximately 25% of the total cardiac output, 20% of the to total cardiac output directly uh, comes to the kidney. At the same time, the kidney uh, is occupied by the total body weight. Nearly 0.5 percentage of the uh, uh, weight the kidney occupied by the total body weight. So it is considered a very small uh, uh, percentage, but but this kidneys will receive 24 percentage of the total cardiac Just imagine. So remaining 70 percentage of the cardiac output go to other parts like brain, lungs, liver and other muscles and bones. So uh, this uh, kidney will receive near 24 percentage otherwise called 1.25 liter of blood per minute. So this blood flow was maintained the uh, excretion otherwise called glamoral filtration rate. So, you know very well, uh, per day, the glomerular was filtered nearly 180 liters of filtrate per day. So, just imagine how many omits volume of blood can be recirculated in the glomerulus. So, this is very important uh, aspect. The renal uh, blood vessels must be uh, to do the three important major functions. One is this renal blood vessels to supply the oxygen to the kidney muscles as well as the nutrients to supply the nutrients to the kidney tissues. Kidney tissues like uh, cortex and middle and pronated corpus capsule so number of uh, tissues are there apart from the number of cells are there for example epithelial or endothelial mesangial magula densa so number of cells are there those cells need some energy for involving the filtration uh, so the renal blood vessels only to provide the nutrients to the kidney number two uh, in that blood vessels to maintain the or uh, to control the sustained adequate pressure. 
is very important phenomena. How means uh, you compared with the other blood vessels, the kidney blood vessels are very different. For example, if you are taking the afferent arterioles or efferent arterioles surrounded by the glomerulus, afferent arterioles blood pressure is different than the efferent arterioles. Why? Because these difference will maintain the standard or sustain adequate pressure. This sustain adequate pressure directly to control the GFR otherwise filtration. So the glomerular capillaries capillaries always maintain the standard pressure. Okay. So th that pressure was controlled by the, some specialized capillaries uh, in the glomerulus and to filter in the blood to remove the waste products. Third one is this blood vessel is to maintain the uh, gradient as smaller t. How means? Uh, you know, as small t means uh, uh, sudden changes or uh, changes of water and electrolytes in the blood. So these two components will maintain the blood as small t. As well as the blood. Uh, important system is that name of the system is called a renin angiotensin system. This system uh, effectively control the uh, blood pressure followed by a small t. Yes. How means this system uh, will reabsorb the water when it's needed. Uh, simultaneously mm, uh, electrolytes are reabsorbed when it's needed in the blood. So uh, these vessels are maintaining the osmolarity for blood flow and maintain the viscosity. Okay. This is very uh, so blood vessels are doing uh, these three important functions. And then next we are going to uh, the, what are the blood vessels are there in the kidney and how they to do the work. Okay. You know very well, we have a pair of kidneys. The kidneys are uh, exactly located back side of the peritoneal cavity. Um, so those kidneys are directly connected with the inferior vena cava, say renal vein. Uh, the way is called abdominal aorta arteries. So the both uh, inferior vena cava and uh, abdominal aorta directly connected with the uh, kidney uh, to the heart. Okay. So this is two important veins which uh, supply the blood. Uh, this is a renal artery or renal vein. Uh, this renal arteries came from abdominal aorta this renal vein get branched from inferior vena curve both arteries and venous venous and arteries directly enter into the kidney uh, this part of the kidney is called renal key yes. so this is the main part so the part contains a number of veins and arteries as well as urethra. So moreover some nerves are there, renal nerves are exist. Okay. So the renal uh, circulation, the renal circulation was maintained in the renal vascularization. Okay. So one of the richest vascular bed in the body. Uh, why? Why means? So here, number of branches, number of veins, number of arteries are there. So the individual arteries or veins do the same individual functions. Uh, that's why uh, the renal circulation is the, one of the most richest vascular bed in the body. Okay. 
renal artery is originated from the lateral aspect of aorta. Suppose the aorta, uh, renal arteries came from the aorta, renal veins came from inferior vena cava. Both renal uh, vein and artery is directly entered into the kidney via renal helium. Renal helium. Explicitly, uh, these two vein uh, arteries are entered exactly posterior to the uh, renal vein. Uh, just imagine this is the renal vein. So the renal artery is entered into the posterior region. Yes. Similarly, anterior to the arginia urethra. Okay, this is the urethra. So uh, before the uh, urethra is the, the area is called uh, anterior. So these renal arteries are veins exactly entered into the renal helium, followed by the veins uh, arteries are get branched. Branched and followed by, uh, followed by, followed by, get branched and finally to reach very tiny blood vessels are glamour capillaries. Okay. Renal arteries are entered the kidney in the helium region. Okay. Followed by then bifurcate are branched. Uh, into the segmental arteries. Okay, the second uh, branch is called segmental arteries. Followed by the segmental arteries, the segmental arteries are functional, but functional blood vessels. So the function started from the segmental arteries or segmental veins. So, whether the segmental arteries which carries the oxygenated blood to the kidney. Similarly, deoxygenated blood came from the kidney through by segmental veins. Okay. The segmental arteries then divided into the name of the vein or artery is called interlobular arteries. Similarly, interlobular veins. Okay, this interlobular veins uh, surrounded by the renal pyramid. Renal pyramid. The blood vessels are uh, surrounded by the renal pyramid. Uh, this blood vessel is called interlobular either arteries or veins. So after after the renal pyramid, the arteries are veins are uh, move towards upward, upward or downward, uh, those arteries or veins are called accurate arteries and accurate veins. So in the interlobular arteries or veins only surrounded by the renal pyramid region. Followed by uh, in interlobular arteries, uh, accurate arteries or veins are Okay. which this interlobular architecture around the kidney run between the cortex and the outer medulla or run between the cortex and outer medulla so these regions are entirely covered by the accurate or interlobular arteries once once those blood veins or arteries across the uh, renal medulla it's entered in the renal cortex so those arteries are uh, the veins are called interlobular arteries or interlobular veins so uh, inferior vena cava or arota then get branched renal artery renal vein. Then first divided into the segmental arteries or segmental veins. Then you can branch into interlobular, interlobular arteries or veins. Followed by these veins or arteries, 
the events is called accurate arteries and veins. Followed by accurate arteries and veins, it's called interlobular arteries. These interlobular arteries are otherwise called cortical arteries. Cortical arteries, renal cortical arteries. This is exactly located in the uh, cortical region. These accurate arteries, uh, accurate vein, or interlobular arteries, or interlobular veins are exactly located uh, renal medulla, run between the renal cortex and the outer medulla. Okay. Followed by uh, interlobular arteries, it can further get branched. This branch is called afferent arteries. These arteries directly enter into the glomerulus. Okay. The average length of the afferent arteries is 20 micrometer in diameter. Okay. It's divided into glomerular capillaries. Once the afferent arteries enter into the glomerulus, it can further subdivide it. The name of the artery is called globulura capillaries. Once again, globulura capillaries is joined together. Finally, form a, uh, the blood veins called or artery is called efferent arteries. Efferent arteries. Uh, so, finally, efferent arteries. This efferent arteries came from the glomerulus. So between the afferent arterioles and uh, afferent arterioles, so the entire arterioles is called glomerular capillaries. So very important capillaries in the kidney because this capillary contains standard pressure and also major filtration takes place. Uh, this uh, pressure, glomerular capillary pressure is called Afferent glomerular pressure. This pressure which control the ultimate filtration uh, by the maintain constant maintain the glomerular filtration rate. Right. Here, uh, here uh, there is an entire image uh, is indicated. What are the blood vents are located? Oh, this are renal vein, this are renal arteries. These two are came from inferior vena cava as a renal vein, and the abdominal aorta get branches into renal arteries. Once it's entered into the kidney, it divided into many parts. Okay. I've started from here. Started from uh, this is the renal promenade area. This is the renal promenade area. Yes. So, this is the renal cortex area. This is the cortex, this is the medullary. Okay. This medullary vein or blood vessels or capillaries are called, capillary called interlobular, interlobular artery. Okay. Plus, the starting arteries or veins are called segmental arteries, a segmental vein. So, the medulla part is divided into two one is outer medulla or inter medulla. Uh, this is the renal medulla uh, prominent region, is the inner medulla region uh, contains blood vessels called segmental arteries. Or segmental veins. The uh, outer medulla region containing blood vessels and arteries called interlobular vein or interlobular arteries. When when the arteries or veins uh, get out from the promenade or enter into the renal cortex, this is called 
accurate arteries are accurate way further it gets branched get branched this branch is called interlobular vein or interlobular artery interlobular vein or interlobular arteries so followed by interlobular arteries uh, divided into another uh, get branched the name is called afferent arteries this afferent arteries directly enter into the directly enter into the glomerulus after enter the glomerulus it further it can divide this is called glomerular capillaries glomerular capillaries okay after that so here in the glomerular capillaries involve the filtration okay so after that this glomerular capillaries once again rejoin and finally to form the name of the uh, arteries called the afferent arteries this afferent arteries came from the um, glomerulus so followed by afferent arteries the afferent arteries come from glomerulus once again it get branched once it get branched this branch is called pretubular capillary this pretubular capillary uh, are branched from the efferent arteries uh, this pretubular capillaries to play important role in the proximal convoluted tubule bridging so uh, uh, to do some important function in the uh, uh, proximal convoluted tubule the proximal convoluted tubule will entirely uh, covered with the pretubular capillary bed followed by the pretubular capillary bed once again rejoined rejoin uh, those type of arteries or veins uh, enter into the renal medulla region renal medulla region this region are called are called um, vena recta vena recta this vena recta divided into two one is ascending vena recta one is descending vena recta ascending vena recta are entirely covered with the ascending loop of henle descending vena recta are surrounded by descending loop of henle yes so these arteries or veins once again rejoin into the accurate uh, veins followed by uh, interlobular veins and followed by segmental veins and followed by renal veins and followed by inferior vena so the deoxygenated blood directly goes to the heart and followed by the lungs so the arteries or carries the uh, deoxygenated blood or good blood good blood yes. one more is super facial glomerulus at that this glomeruli uh contains afferent arteries or afferent arteries or glomerular capillaries don't worry and also some just a glomerular just a glomerular apparatus so this just a medullary glomerular apparatus uh presented glomerulus is called superficial glomeruli superficial glomeruli Yes. So this is the entire uh, renal vascularization around the nephron. So once again we recall uh, what are the renal arteries or veins that are in the nephron. 
Number one, uh, vena cava, inferior vena cava is a major vein which connected between the heart and kidney. Number two, so after inferior vena cava get branched, this is renal artery. Uh, this renal artery enter into the kidney via renal ileum. So after this renal artery is enter into the renal ileum, it get branched. This branch is called anterior and posterior segmental artery. Anterior, posterior segmental artery. Uh, whether the segmental artery is located upper part of the urethra is called anterior. The segmental artery is located uh, below the urethra is called posterior segmental artery. Followed by segmental arteries, the arteries further get branched. It's called apical segmental arteries. So these two arteries are. Uh, exactly located in the renal pelvis, renal pelvis area. So followed by apical segmental artery, uh, get branched. This is uh, name of the artery is called interlobular arteries. This artery is exactly located the inner renal medulla ridge. Inner uh, renal medulla region. Yes. Exactly, we say uh, this lobula are covered with a minor and major calyx. Minor calyx and major calyx area. Followed by interlobular arteries, uh, it can further subdivided. The name of the artery is called accurate uh, arteries. These arteries are exactly present in the um, renal bromine or the area between the uh, cortex and the outer middle region. The cortex, the outer middle region, uh, the vessels called acute uh, arteries. So, followed by uh, acute arteries, the arteries can once again be further divided. It's called interlobular arteries. Interlobular arteries or cortical arteries. So, followed by uh, interlobular arteries, uh, it can further subdivided. The name of the artery is called Afferent arteries. This afferent artery is exactly located in the renal cortex region. These two are present in the renal cortex region. Renal cortex region. And also afferent arteries directly enter into the glomerulus. So after its branch, uh, the name of the blood vessel is called. Clamoral capillaries. Okay. So followed by uh, rejoining the joining, rejoining of glomerular capillaries in the Bowman capsule, uh, it's get out from the glomerulus. The name of the arteries called the afferent arteries. The afferent arteries once again. Uh, uh, Join the name of the afferent arteries uh, is called interlobular arteries. Interlobular arteries. Some part of the arteries are deviated from the uh, interlobular arteries. It's called stellate veins. Stellate veins. This vein exactly located in the renal renal capsule region. Renal capsule region is the entire renal this region this renal capsule regions are entirely covered with the stellate veins stellate 
So this interlimpular uh, artery is once again joined into the uh, pretubular capillary, a uh, pretubular capillary bed. This is the important uh, capillaries uh, which play a role. Uh, is called the process called uh, reabsorption. This entire uh, pretubular capillary is surrounded by the maximum convoluted tubules. Okay. So followed by uh, these veins are uh, entered into the middle region uh, and surrounded by the loop of Henle. It's called vena recta. So whether the ascending vena recta uh, surrounded by the ascending loop of Henle. A descending vena recta surrounded by uh, descending loop of candle. So these vena recta do uh, uh, some important function. Uh, name of the function is called reabsorption, especially water reabsorption. Okay. So next one is these uh, veins are once again joined together, is called uh, interlobular veins. In the lobular veins is surrounded by the surrounded by the primary ridge. Uh, so once again, it's uh, joint form a arcade veins and followed by interlobar uh, veins, followed by apical segmental vein. And followed by anterior postal segmental veins and renal veins. The renal veins came out the kidney and joined to the inferior vena. So, this is the name of the veins that are actually surrounded by the renal nephron. Okay. Next. The efferent arteriols, the efferent arteriols, uh, then uh, descend towards the medulla, medulla to form a second capillary bed. So uh, the efferent arteriol came from the glomerulus. Once again, it's uh, branched and to form a secondary capillary bed. Why the bed is formed means? This bed entirely associated are uh, surrounded by the proximal convoluted tubules to receive the uh, amino acids, protein, glucose, uh, urea, and electrolytes and some water. So this entire uh, secondary capillary bed surrounded by the uh, proximal convoluted tubules. The name of the efferent arteries surrounded by the Proximal convoluted tubule is called pretubular capillaries. This is a very important um, capillaries in the uh, renal vascularization. So these secondary capillary bed, uh, which involve in the process called reabsorption, the absorption, uh, the glomerular capillaries to the filtration. The pretubular capillaries are continue to straight and enter the medulla region. The name of the blood vessel is called vasa recta. The vasa recta is a group of blood vessels surrounded by the uh, group of Henle. Uh, so this is also to the important function, uh, especially water reabsorption. This orientation, this orientation means the vasa recta and the loop of the orientation, which allows return the electrolytes and water, return the electrolytes and water from the um, reabsorption of the tubular epithelial cells and it's directly enter into the uh, circulation and maintaining the concentration gradient. 
until the consultation period. Once, once the tubular cells, the lumen sites, the molecules get absorbed, so this is a tubular region, I think this is a lumen region. So this is a blood region. So the entire blood vessels, this is called the vena recta, are tightly associated with the uh, loop of Henle epithelial cells. So uh, reabsorbed molecule he directly entered into the uh, was a recta, followed by maintaining the particular uh, molecules concentration in the blood or whether it's needed. And also red blood cells that travel in the vasa recta is subjected to very low axisen tension. Why? Why? Because so low axisen tension means this uh, vasa recta uh, sometimes called vein, which carries deoxygenated blood or low axisen level in the blood. This low axisen level also uh, influenced by the hyperosmotic environment in the medulla. Yes, this hyperosmotic pressure will regulate the entire reabsorption process followed by excretion of the waste product. So, thank you for watching.